this video, we'll use Excel to make a table of consecutive numbers in any base. Excel comes with some built-in functions for base 2, 8, and 16. Base is used most often in computer science. But in math class, we sometimes want to be able to use any base. So we will put the base we're using in the cell M2. We're going to start with base 3. And here are our place values. 1, the base, the base squared, the base cubed, etc. You can get these superscripts on the format cells menu, by the way. In row 3, we'll put our starting number. We're going to start with 1, but we can start with anything, and we'll change that at some point. Now, when we count, we want in the 1's place, we want to just cycle through the digits in the base. So in base 3, we'll want to go 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0. If it were base 4, we'd go 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, etc. And to do that kind of cycling, we use the mod function. Now, I was having a great deal of problem today typing and talking at the same time, so I put some of the formulas in rather than do 7,000 takes on this video. Um, so for the mod function, we're starting with equal mod now g3 plus 1, that means the cell above me plus 1. And then the mod is m2, which is the base. Those dollar signs mean it's, means it's an absolute reference. It stays the same throughout, even as we change rows. And I discuss absolute references in my multiplication table video in great detail. So let me drag this formula down. And... There we go. That's the alternating that we want. So if I change, say, to base 6, I'm alternating going up to 5. Change to base 12, I have these 10s and 11s in there. Now, in part 2 of the video, I'll tell you how to change them to A's and B's and make everything look really nice. But that's a little bit more complicated. So we'll stick to bases less than 10 in this video. Okay. So now, moving to the B's place, or the threes place here, if we take a look and think about counting in other bases, these numbers will stay the same until we have a zero on the right. When we get to zero on the right, we're increasing the B's place by one. Now, in order to do this in Excel, we need an if statement, so we can check whether that digit to the right is, in fact, zero. So let's take a look at the pre-entered formula here. Here is our if statement. Now if g4 equals 0, so g4 means the cell to the right is 0, then we want to add 1, and we have to add with the mod, so we cycle. So mod f3, that's the cell above, plus 1, modulo the base. And the if statement starts with what you do if the statement's true. So if it's 0, we want to add 1. And then if it's not 0, we want to stay. And that's F3. Okay, so we can see it. I was worried I was out of the screen there. So let's see how this looks. Let me drag this formula down. I mean, I can go further, but... And that's what we want. We're cycling in threes. You see, it. we up when we have a zero here. Let's see if I change the base. Again, we're only changing this column when we have a zero. Now, we're not quite right here because at this point, we, we should be one, zero, zero, not zero, zero. But we have to do the other columns. We'll go back to base three. And now, as we move on, because I don't want to do the same formula for every column. I mean, I don't want to do a different formula. I do want to do the same formula. When we count, what we want to check, when we get to the place where everything to the right is 0, that's when we want to up the place. Okay, so here it was just one cell to the right. But now we need to make it so we're checking every cell to the right is 0. And there's a few different ways to do this. Here's how I did it. So again, we're looking at an if statement. And then what I did was I just added everything to the right. Now, that's a little bit 
fishy in that we're adding in base 10. Um, but it's okay, it works. Um, you could also use the or statement. I thought the sum was a little bit clearer. If everything to the right is zero, it's going to add to zero. So you see the sum, now F4 is gonna mean the cell to the right of wherever I'm at. And then I have this dollar sign by the G because that is the rightmost place. So I wanna add to all the places from the right of where I am until the ones place. So if that sum is equal to zero, then I add one, as I've been doing in the same mod kind of way. And then again, if that sum is not zero, then I just keep the cell above. All right, now this formula is going to work for all the cells, so I will drag this to the left first. And I don't want to lose my coloring, so I'm going to fill without formatting. And now we'll go down. There we have it. We're counting in base three. And that looks right. Okay, now maybe you'd like to uh, not have it all in separate rainbow colored columns here. And so we're going to concatenate, put all of the characters together here. Oh, actually, before I do that, let me just try changing the base so you can see. Oh, now we're counting in base five. Okay, it's a little bit of work, but it does a lot of different things. So that might be enough, but if you want to do more, we can do this concatenation, which I did not put in in advance. And it's a little bit annoying because you have to, I'm just using the ampersand sign, and you have to actually do it for every cell. In fact, now I'm on top of myself. I'll show you in a second. You can see I just everything ampersanded together here. And then we will turn around. And now I have them in one row. Now I have a lot of leading zeros in there. And if I want to get rid of them, it's a little trick that I learned from the Excel help menu. If you click on the cell with the one, and I'm just going to do control C to copy that cell. And then I highlight all these cells over here. And then I want to go to edit and choose paste special. And I guess I'll do the magnifying glass here so you can see. So this is the paste special. And then under this, there's operation and I choose multiply. And so what I'm actually going to be doing is I just, and I did just change the color here too, but by multiplying by one, I changed those from um, text into actual numbers. And so the leading zeros went away. And now there's my number table in base three. Now say I want to start with something else like two, two, two oh, well, let me see that, two, three. That's a problem here. Didn't, we could put in error messages, too, when you go outside the base, but I haven't done that. All right, so here we can start with 2021, and it just keeps counting from there. At a certain point, we run out of space, so you might need to do this with more columns. Now, if I go back to starting at 1, I can look at a lot of different bases, say base 6. There we go. We're counting in base 6. Um, now, if I try to do a base that's bigger than 10, um, they're, they're not going to look right in this column. So that's what I'm going to talk about in the second video. But here's a way to make a lot of different tables of consecutive numbers in various bases.